some people who have diabetes, they'll say that their fasting glucose is higher than 140. Now, why would that happen if they're eating correctly? Exactly. So a normal fasting glucose would be below 100 milligrams per deciliter. Anything above 126, more than twice, that makes a diagnosis of diabetes. So 140, it's uncontrolled diabetes. Why does that happen if they're eating correctly? So diabetes is about much more than just what you put in your mouth. And unfortunately, a lot of people just have this one dimensional understanding of diabetes is now they need to stop eating sugar, for example. So to understand what is your blood glucose being managed by, we have to understand the organs inside your body. Besides just you putting it in your mouth, there are three major organs that take care of your blood glucose. And in my book, I talk about them. We call them the three musketeers. This is the way they've been described in the science world, is the three musketeers of glucose. What do you mean by three musketeers? Yeah, so there are basically three organs that take care of glucose at all times. The liver, the muscle, and the pancreas. So these three, the liver, the muscle, and the pancreas, are the three musketeers. Exactly. And what's their role? Right, so each of them plays a different role. They help each other. So the liver is the glucose provider. So when you say that the morning glucose is high, Obviously, you didn't eat anything. You just woke up. And why is it high? It was nice when I slept. And now next morning it's gone up. I haven't eaten anything. I was just sleeping. So obviously, it didn't come from your food. You've not eaten anything. So where is it coming from? It's coming from your liver, whose job is to provide glucose 24 hours a day. If you've not eaten, the liver will maintain constant glucose supply, even if you've not had anything that contains glucose. So that's the liver who is doing glucose providing. Then comes muscle. Muscle is the glucose taker. Its job is to consume glucose. So people will see that after a walk, their glucose will come down. After a workout, it will come down. That's why you'll see people who will say, oh, after a big meal or after your meals, take a walk. One of the reasons for that is to activate the muscles so that the muscles will take the glucose and keep it in a normal range. The third organ is the pancreas. Pancreas is a hormone secreting gland. It also secretes other enzymes. But for today, we're talking about the hormone insulin, which is secreted by the pancreas. So the pancreas is the glucose regulator. If glucose is high, insulin secretion will come to get the glucose levels down. If glucose is low, insulin secretion will dial down. So it's a regulator. It's like a thermostat. Depending on what the glucose is doing, the pancreas is responding with more insulin or less insulin. So it's a regulator. So from what you're saying is three musketeers. The first one, liver, is the producer. The second one is the muscle, which is consuming that glucose. And then there is the third one, which is the pancreas, which is regulating the glucose. So it's balancing the glucose that is being produced and consumed. Exactly. Is that correct? That's exactly right. So if someone says their morning glucose is high, that's because the liver is overproducing glucose more than required and it's not responding the way it should to the signal from the pancreas. The insulin message from the pancreas is not able to work on the liver enough to keep the glucose below 100. So it's an imbalance over there between insulin and the liver. We call this insulin resistance in the liver. Why does that happen? Because these are all organs of the body. So shouldn't the pancreas, which is creating insulin, already work along with the liver to ensure that the glucose is maintained at all levels? Exactly. So that's what they've been trying to do for years. So if we talk about type 2 diabetes, what has happened is you didn't get this overnight. So if you look at your blood reports, somebody who has this gradual fasting glucose going higher and higher and higher, it's not happened overnight. It's happened over years. And over time, what the pancreas is trying to do with insulin regulating glucose, it's not able to do the job. And this is the imbalance. This is where diabetes starts to affect the organs and insulin effect is not working in the organs. That's how you eventually end up with diabetes. High glucose in spite of 
high insulin coming from the pancreas, trying to keep those glucose levels normal. That's why we talk about actually lifestyle ways to help bring these things back into balance, which had been probably going out of, out of range years and years before these glucose levels went high. You know, a lot of people, and I've heard it in the last couple of years, they're talking about fatty liver. What is that? That's like one of the new epidemics that we're beginning to catch now. Um, it's probably always been there, but because we are doing more sonography or ultrasound, we're catching it. And because more people are getting these blood test packages, they're doing their liver enzymes or SGOT, SGPT blood test. So we're seeing the liver is now getting inflamed and full of fat. It's not normal to have fat inside the liver. So on an ultrasound, you can see this and you can see the warning signs of that on a blood test. And what's causing the fat to be accumulated in the liver? Yeah, especially when people have been following these low fat diets, they're always worried that, oh, I'm already eating low fat. So now how do I reduce the fat in my diet even more? Right. And why do I have a fatty liver if I'm not eating any fat? So the interesting thing is fatty liver is not caused by the fat that you eat. It's caused by the carbohydrates that you eat. And it used to be something that we would see in a patient or in a person who's drinking large amounts of alcohol. But now we're seeing fatty liver even in children. We're seeing it in people who don't drink any alcohol. So it used to be called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, N-A-F-L-D. Now we're also calling it metabolic associated fatty liver disease, M-A-F-L-D. Doesn't matter what you call it. The issue is the same, that the three musketeers that we talk about in terms of glucose metabolism, the liver, the muscle, the pancreas, the, these organs talk to each other through insulin. When there is too high insulin, that effect on the liver creates fatty liver. So all the food that I'm eating, if it is high in carbohydrates, that will create high insulin. And that puts all that carbohydrate into storage in the liver. And the liver is now getting full of excessive carbohydrates in the form of fat. It's actually becoming one of the number one causes of liver failure. So one could get fatty liver even if they're not consuming alcohol. Exactly. It's coming through the diet rich in carbohydrates. So what can I do to help my liver? Exactly. So there is no one medication that's going to cure a fatty liver. Unfortunately, I have colleagues who are having to do liver transplants on liver failure patients because the liver has failed because of fatty liver causing permanent liver damage and liver scarring. So that's what we call cirrhosis and liver failure. So obviously we don't want to wait till it becomes so permanent and so uh, damaged that you have to go look for a donor to donate a liver to you. So what can you do much before that? There are even stages within fatty liver, stage one, stage two, stage three. So when it's in the early stages, it can still be reversed. And we've seen our patients do this. And that actually comes down to lifestyle change. So we will supervise them step by step in multiple different lifestyle changes to actually reverse this when it's early. Now, is fatty liver only associated with people who have diabetes? No, you can have just fatty liver, no diabetes, normal blood glucose. And that could be the place where you're seeing the early changes, which if somebody stayed like that for years and years and years, they are on their way to developing type 2 diabetes. So now we know that there's type 2 diabetes. And we've, you know, we also know there's pre-diabetes that is a range to that. What we're saying is that fatty liver is even a precursor to that. Yes, fatty liver can be a precursor to diabetes. It can be a warning sign that you already have insulin resistance, which is the exact thing that causes the imbalance in hormones that puts people on the track of type 2 diabetes and obesity.